Hi everyone, I'm Hoodie Angel Brandon, and welcome to another Abyssal Legendary Hero Battle. Today we are taking on the beloved princess, though not by me, uh, Nana, uh, to earn a gold picnic lunch. Uh, who who spray painted my sandwiches? These are no longer edible. This is a tragedy. <laughs> we must make her pay for for painting my sandwiches. Uh, and this map, um. I don't think it would honestly be that difficult. It doesn't look that hard, although Nana herself, um, with her deflect magic, I could see giving people a little bit of a difficult time, uh, especially since she is also kind of fast, so uh, could be troublesome. But I had a difficult time with this, mostly just because of the selection of units that I decided to bring. Uh, for this one, I wanted to bring some of the lesser used units, uh, and we also have our new plus 10 speedy ranged armored unit, Ignatz. Uh, leading the charge this time is our fell tactician, Robin. I thought it'd be fun to bring him in and have him fight uh, Nana. His build is uh, kind of, <laughs> frankly, all over the place. But, you know, we're just playing some 4D chess here. You see that my mind is too fast for eyes. <laughs> Uh, we're just, t our tactics are too far ahead, too advanced for them to understand and comprehend uh, what we're doing with this. <laughs> so we've got Tactical Bolt for the boost. Uh, even though it's a small boost, it will actually give us what we need for this map, uh, primarily for Ignatz. Gives him a boost while freeing up everyone else's C and Seal for more important skills. Uh, and Robin's tome is not actually, frankly, that important. He doesn't have to do a ton of fighting in this, and uh, so the base effect doesn't really matter. Uh, reposition, of course, standard. Blue Flame uh, actually gives him just enough damage to get a very key kill uh, that he was missing with, like, Bonfire. So I'm actually very glad that I gave him that. Uh, close Reversal is interesting, and I'll explain why later on, but just... It's it's very interesting in this case. Swordbreaker, because even though he's so fast, we need to uh, get that guaranteed double on Nana. Uh, joint Drive Defense uh, boosts his defense uh, for better tanking, uh, theoretically speaking. Uh, but it also boosts uh, Garen and Ignatz, who are also more important for tanking. Garen's going to be doing most of the melee tanking, and Ignatz tanks all ranged attacks. Uh, so that shores up his defense against bow units, making it very helpful. And then attack speed form just gives him a bit of extra oomph. Uh, leans into his speedy uh, niche. And next up, our newest good boy, Ignatz, who is the second far save armor for the Angel Army. And he is just running his one very basic build, which is his far save speed tank setup uh, with Savvy Fighter to uh, reduce damage and guarantee his follow-up attacks go through and deny enemy follow-up attacks from things like Bold Fighter and things like that. Kestrel Stance gives him the guard effect and shores up his attack and speed. Uh, same with attack speed bond, giving him a little more oomph there. Far Save, of course, lets him swoop in and protect his allies. Uh, though we did have to actually swap out his Aether for Noontime for the uh, faster heals because he was getting chipped down a little too frequently. Uh, with how many units he has to tank in. He really does have to tank a lot on this map. And Rally Attack Speed gives a slightly bigger buff than Robin, which is actually important. Uh, it also lets him provide a buff if Robin isn't nearby. Uh, so it's not quite as redundant as it first appears. Next up, our dear little sis Sakura, finally getting off the bench. I haven't used her in a while, uh, so I'm happy to dust her off. She's just here to provide some very basic heals with her Restore and Heavenly Light. Fortress Defrez gives her survivability, though she doesn't actually tank any hits on this map. And Distant Guard and Drive Speed lets her further support the team. Uh, speed especially important for Ignatz since he does live and die by his speed stat. And Distant Guard also helps reduce some of the damage that he has to tank. Uh, because again, he's just tanking so many ranged units. Finally, our favorite newly refined bad dad, Papa Garen, uh, here to smash through the opposition 
Uh, he's got his new refine, which is actually surprisingly helpful on this map because it provides a little bit of chip damage, which having that little bit of extra pre-existing damage on a foe can make or break a matchup in these abyssal maps where the enemies have just so much HP. Having 13 extra damage can really swing things in your favor, and it also gives him that sustain. Uh, he can fully recharge when we're swarmed by enemies, and it just gives him a bit of extra offense and defense. Other than that, uh, nothing too crazy here. Steady Breath charges Aether faster, QR gets those guaranteed doubles, Drive Attack helps uh, Ignatz and Robin uh, get some key kills, and Def Res Menace just further compounds his ability to uh, swing stats. Uh, I was kind of unsure about it, but it's actually working out pretty well. So let's go ahead and get in here. As always, I feel like I've rambled a little too long, though some of the skill choices and even the team comp itself are a little questionable, so I wanted to explain things. Uh, but it actually works a little better than it looks like at a glance, as we will soon demonstrate. So to start, we are going to move Papa Garen and Sakura uh, so that they start at the top of the map and uh, Ignatz and Robin start down here. And Ignatz being an armor does complicate things a little because he needs to reach up here, but he also requires a buff, which Sakura and Garen cannot give. Uh, so he has to start down here uh, next to Robin. Uh, and that's the entire reason we need to bring Tactical Bolt. So that we can get this turn one boost and uh, so that Robin can go ahead and start by giving the buff and then repositioning Ignatz up. Uh, and Garen has to start up here so that he can move over and tank this Axe Fighter. Uh, we are going to move Sakura up and we're going to move Ignatz out of the way so that he is up here next to Papa Garen so he can uh, provide safe support. And we're just gonna go ahead and rally. Not that that's important at this point, but now Axe Fighter attacks into Garen we're just gonna transform, they're gonna hit us, and we're gonna counter with the Breath of Blight. Uh, they hit us again. Garen's not looking so great, but surprise, Aether! Thanks to our Steady Breath, we charged that very quickly and healed up a bit. Red Bow attacks Ignatz, uh, hits us twice with the Brave Bow, but we're going to uh, counter with the Noontime, heal ourselves up, and take him out with our natural double. And now, uh, Garen cannot defeat this Bow Cavalier, but if we have Ignatz come over and use Rally Attack Speed, uh, and then Sakura heals Ignatz for that little bit of chip damage, which will actually help him survive later. But now she is down here to provide Drive Speed support, and now Garen can actually double the Bow Cavalier and take him out, <laughs> which is really funny. I. I just always laugh when a kind of slow unit like Garen or Xander is just doubling enemies without using like quicker posts or things like that. Um, but next, we are going to have to attack this Lance Knight with Robin. And the entire reason we had to bring Close Reversal is not because we're actually going to tank this Lance Knight, but it's because with the defense boost and the fact that we can counterattack, uh, it will actually discourage this Lance Knight from attacking into Robin on its next turn, which uh, if it attacks Robin, it will kill Robin. But now it won't want to, and instead it's going to move up and attack Papa Garen. Uh, and they're going to do a big chunk of damage to us, but we are going to uh, survive. And Garen's still going to take him out on the counterattack, uh, heal up with Aether for one point. <laughs> Fantastic. But Otherwise, without close reversal, that Axe Knight would attack Robin and kill us. Uh, the Green Mage attacks into Ignatz, does a good chunk, but we reduce the damage and heal up with Noontime, which gives us just enough HP to survive this Blue Thief's attack, uh, which has armor effectiveness, and we will counter-attack, uh, take him out with the double, and use uh, our healing to restore ourselves a little bit. And as you can see, Papa Garen also uh, did a massive amount of splash damage thanks to Breath of Blight triggering and healing himself up to full. And Ignatz uh, being so fast with Savvy Fighter that uh, Thief actually had Wind Sweep 
and Ignatz was able to get enough speed stacked up so that he could actually counterattack through that very fast uh, thief and ignore the wind sweep, which was very helpful. And that probably wouldn't have worked if I was using uh, my original build where I was going to stack his def and res instead of his speed. So that's just kind of interesting. Uh, but next, we are going to have Ignatz move up and attack this green mage. Gonna take some damage, but we will heal back up with Noontime. Just a little bit, uh, but that's fine. Sakura can top him off a little bit more. Uh, she's not got the biggest heals, but enough to uh, help keep him sustained. Uh, next, we're going to have Robin attack this sword fighter and... We're only going to hit once, so we charge our blue flame, but we don't actually get to trigger it. And that's because this sword fighter has no follow-up, which actually prevents our sword breaker from triggering and being wasted attacking this sword fighter. Because we don't actually want blue flame to trigger there. Uh, we actually want it to just be charged up for next turn. So the fact that uh, they have no follow-up actually works against them in this case. And now we're going to have Garen reposition Robin up so that he's in range of Ignatz. Otherwise, this blue cavalier will attack and kill him. Uh, so we want to get him up in range of our save skill. And that also puts Garen uh, down in range of that axe cav. So the blue cavalier attacks. Ignatz will counterattack. Once again, hitting for uh, a very pitiful uh, noontime trigger but uh, he's still fine. This Red Cavalier attack Ignatz almost takes him out, but we are uh, healed up just enough to survive thanks to Sakura. Uh, and now this Axe Cavalier attacks into Garen, does nothing, and we're just going to uh, double back with our QR and finish him off with a big and mighty Aether, bam. And that Axe Cavalier could be very troublesome uh, because it has Lunge, which can easily put you in range of Nana, and if she initiates on you, you're probably going to die. Uh, but now, at the start of our turn, once again, uh, Papa Garen's Breath of Blight has triggered and chipped Nana down for 13 damage, which is actually very important, uh, because she is very tanky, uh, thanks to the uh, Inflated Abyssal stats. Also hit this Blue Flyer uh, and the Sword Fighter. Uh, though they're less important, it's still nice to hit them and uh, get the little bit of chip damage on them. So now we're going to move Garen over one space. Ignatz is going to rally on Robin. And we're going to have Sakura use Restore on Ignatz. Trigger our Heavenly Light, which will uh, heal up the others, but they are already fully healed, so it doesn't really matter. But now, uh, with Garen nearby to trigger our Blue Flame Boost and Sword Breaker, we are able to attack Nana and take her out. She will reduce some of the damage on the second hit thanks to Deflect Magic, but thanks to all of that, also uh, Ignatz's Rally, we have enough to actually take her out. Uh, and uh, trigger our blue flame, bam, take her out, 67, I think that was exact damage, uh, thanks to Garen's Breath of Blight trigger. Lance Fighter attacks into Garen, does nothing, swaps us down uh, into range of this sword fighter who attacks us, triggers our aether, and now we will one shot. <laughs> and the blue flyer attacks into Robin, Ignatz swoops in to protect us, save the day, and Shoot him out of the sky. Boom. And all that's left is to finish the job. Ignatz, shoot down the Lance Flyer. Pew. Pew, pew, pew. And with that, we have cleared the stage. Great job. <laughs> uh, fantastic job, guys. Uh, again, uh, not the most inherently synergistic team or anything, but it was fun. These were some of my uh, less used units, like Sakura hasn't been in a clear in a long time, so it was nice to uh, dust her off and let her come along. And we got uh, a very ruined lunch. Hooray. <laughs> so with that, the Angel Army uh, adds another win to our record. 
Uh, and this time we won with the B team, which is, uh, again, really cool. I like that. Uh, it was it was cool to uh, welcome Ignatz in with a nice clear as usual. But we also got to show off uh, Papa Garen's refine. We got to bring Sakura in, who hasn't been used very often. And we got to even uh, have Robin do some work with a very weird build. Uh, but we're just we're just showing the you know expect the unexpected with Robin, right? Uh, so anyway, I had fun with this one. Uh, it was it was a bit of an interesting challenge. And yeah, thank you guys as always so much for watching and joining me for another Abyssal Clear. Until next time, this is Hoodie Angel Brandon and the Angel Army signing out.